Five Europeans captured in eastern Ukraine have gone on trial in a court run by Kremlin-backed separatists in the city of Donetsk. They come from Sweden, Croatia and the United Kingdom. All pleaded not guilty to charges of being mercenaries. If convicted, they could face the death penalty. In June, two Britons and a Moroccan, all of whom were captured by pro-Russian forces in Ukraine's industrial east, were sentenced to death on the same charge. They've appealed their verdicts. On another front, there's a growing dispute over Russians with visas being allowed to visit Europe. Ukraine wants a ban, saying being able to travel is not a God-given right when your government has invaded another country. The issue was raised at a meeting of Nordic leaders in Oslo, attended by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who found himself at odds with his counterparts. What is important for us is that we also understand that there are a lot of people fleeing from Russia because they are disagreeing with the Russian regime. All the decisions we take should not make it more complicated uh, for them to, to go for freedom. Ordinary Russian people didn't start the war, but at the same time we have to realize that they are supporting uh, the war. I think it's not right that Russian citizens can travel, enter Europe, Schengen area, uh, be tourists, see the sightseeing while Russia is killing people in Ukraine. It's wrong. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, President Vladimir Zelensky has welcomed American actor Liv Schreiber and former footballer Andrei Shevchenko. The pair are ambassadors for the Ukrainian fundraising platform United24. The project was launched by Zelensky to centralize the collection of donations in support of the country. The number of civilian deaths in Ukraine continues to grow. According to Kyiv, at least three people have lost their lives and 20 others have been wounded in the last few hours under Russian artillery fire. Heavy shelling has taken place in Kharkiv, the country's second largest city and in several towns and villages in the Donetsk Oblast, which is still under Ukrainian control. There have also been civilian casualties in Zatoka, near the port of Odessa. On Sunday, three sunbathers were killed and two more were injured when a mine exploded on a Black Sea beach. One of the bodies was recovered on Monday. Russia and Ukraine's military has reported little progress. Moscow claims to have taken control of a day in the Kharkiv region, which has been subjected to heavy shelling. Officials in Kyiv say Ukrainian troops struck a base belonging to the Russian Wagner Group with missiles. While invading troops are continuing their offensive on the front lines, in the rear, Moscow is making preparations to annex occupied territories. Russian passports are being provided to the population and salaries and pensions are being paid in rubles. Meanwhile, the international press have been invited to film this new normality. This comes as Ukraine is trying to regain control of the southern city of Kherson where defending troops have destroyed bridges vital to Russia's supply lines. Help from Ukraine's allies has been key. And in the UK, thousands of Ukrainian soldiers are undergoing training and will join the front line in the coming weeks.